everybody, today Jim is driving by my gym and he's stopping by. I don't know what this is here, whether it's I've rubbed too hard with a, a scraper or what, this little bruise thing here, but right. I don't know what it is. Uh, so he's stopping in to do some dry needling today and the question that I have for him is what do you recommend in a hand therapist? What should someone look for? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And so the CHT designation is a subspecialty within the field of both occupational and physical therapy. So it's you can either be an occupational therapist or a physical therapist. And what it is is a specialization uh, in anatomy and biomechanics kinesiology for the upper quarter. So from cervical spine, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand. So what to look for in a good uh, certified hand therapist is really um, finding someone that listens to you, I think. That's one of the most important things. Uh, uh, one of my friends is just doing a, um, a presentation on pain science. And she, one of her quotes and slides in her name is Karen Ecker. Um, she's a great PT. Don't tell her I said that. Um, but she's like, is it, a therapist, it's not all about you. So when they get someone that comes in, I think, especially for someone in your clientele and stuff like that, is that they want someone you want going to listen to you and say, oh, you should never do that again. Because a lot of therapists, do, it's like surgeons who say, oh, you know, hey, you've got a bad knee or shoulder. Yeah, you never want to squat or bench press again. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. or, or someone that says that they think that they know their sport better than you. We know our craft. You know your craft better than us. So where we come into, and that's what I love about the crossover with myself and, and, and powerlifting sports is I, I, I live that at the same time. It's, it's like you live your, your, your profession. So we need to be able to lift, listen and hear what you have to say so we can help you get yourself better. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's one of them. Um, we, there, there's some other differences I think we can talk about here in a second once I set these needles in here on Jed's hand. So um, it's still a middle finger, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you said it's better? It's coming along better for you? Yeah, it's coming along. Good. So, it's still, I mean, it's still like got discomfort at times, uh -huh. but um, really the only thing that bothers me is the three by four napalm pinch. So that width just seems to irritate stuff. So there's one set in there already. And there's about a five centimeter carryover, and these are sliding in nice compared to what they used to. Jed, Jed used to, it was like driving a, nail into a piece of wood he was it was so thick and difficult but i think it's doing a good job of keeping it soft this is a tender area okay oh yeah okay we got there's four two or three number in the next one and then we can sit and chat while we yeah while these are kind of marinated in there lack of a better term all right and then what we'll do is you okay so far yeah okay all right, so we're gonna let those sit right there for a second, let them kind of marinate. Um, when it comes to the profession of, of uh, our, our uh, as a certified hand therapist, the goal is to kind of take a look at, um, there you go. The table wasn't locked. Yeah. It's good enough. Yeah, the goal is to take a look at, let's say your grip professionals or grip guys and stuff, is what are the mechanics and what is it, what is it that's causing uh, either a break in the chink of your armor or something like that, it's not allowing you to move. So we take a look at like structures is it a tendon? Is it a pulley? Is it a, sh a sheath that's around a, t a tendon? Uh, is it a mechanical thing? Is it a bony issue? And kind of what we problem solve. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at our profession and we problem solve. So if you have, if you're a grip guy or a powerlifter or a bodybuilder or whatever, and you're getting back in and you have a, a shoulder, elbow, wrist, or hand problem, what that clinician is supposed to do is help you understand one, the, the uh, issue that at hand help you understand the etiology or why this started in the first place. And really what I think is to help you modify the rehab process to get you back into doing what you're doing and to help you perform those activities to, 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 so you can fully reintegrate back into them. So again, maybe they, uh, again, maybe they'll have a better understanding about mechanics, biomechanics and those types of things. Mm -hmm. What's up cat? Um, but, um, you are going to have a better understanding about what you need to be able to do. So I think that's where there's a, the class to be a collaborative effort. So mm -hmm. what if, uh, what if a person's like the guy that asked this has been, is in a pretty large area, like city. Okay. So he might have as a choice oh, yeah. of people to use. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything, you know, you brought up some good points about once you finally interact with a person, 
But what if they haven't met them yet and they've got a half dozen to choose from? That's a great point. So I know that your your title is CHT. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that could be one thing to look for. What yeah. what else as far as the selection process of vetting out? That's a great question because you might get some that are used to working with maybe the elderly population, and, and I do work with some of those, but but they don't they don't have any or even have some of their own biases, mm -hmm. right? About um, I, I would look for uh, based on what are your likes. You can go to the American Society of Hand Therapists, the ASHT.org, and then type in locate a therapist, and then you can type in and then in your particular geographic area, and if they're a member of the American Society of Hand Therapists, they will come up on your uh, on that on that uh, website search. yeah search what you can do then is it, it's information at age is call them tell them I, i'm a grip guy you know i've got some real elbow pain going on here and stuff like that because you might get some therapists that say listen ah the research says just wait a year and it'll go away mm -hmm. that that, that's work. a that's a possibility but it ain't gonna work for you and we can do things to help you get through that process a little bit faster mm -hmm. so um so i would say call that up and you might have someone i i think i don't know if i'm correct me on this or wrong before but i've had um, people mentioned people, uh, uh, folks like yourself, like, oh, those guys, those grip guys, they're going to get terrible arthritis earlier on than, than someone else. That's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's their, their, their logical fallacy is because they think because you grip and pinch all the time that you're going to be worse off. But actually, I bet you probably have a cleaner x-ray than someone your age uh, who doesn't do any of this stuff because you're working the muscles that give stability around that mm -hmm. hand and thumb at the same time. And I think if it's someone that's been in it a while, then they know how to kind of self-regulate and monitor what they've been doing yeah. and keep from pushing themselves over the edge. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the people who are more at risk of developing, and I don't have a great deal of understanding of arthritis, but to me that's something that develops over time, right? It, it is, yeah. So the people who generally start and then quit real early, they overdo it. They buy every piece of equipment known to man, they start using all of it, they overuse, they damage something, right. and then they get out. Mm -hmm. And then the people that stick with it usually are more educated and they want to continue to do this for more years, so right. they, they take a more proactive approach and start listening to their bodies more and right. do more of the preventive stuff so that stuff doesn't set in. Right, right. So I think, you know, just a just you know a mental experiment would be yeah uh the longer that you're in it the more care you're going to take care of the more you're going to do to take care of yourself the more prevention you're going to do and the even less risk you'll have of developing uh, yeah and, and i couldn't agree with that 100 percent. and so there's been lots of studies done on people who are so active like they're seeing people in their 70s and 80s men and women now some great videos on instagram with people deadlifting in their 80s and mm -hmm. stuff like that they're doing great because they've made a lifestyle choice all the way through. So for you to come in the therapist and say, oh gosh, the worst thing you can do is to continue. No, that's not the worst thing. You might have a dosage. Maybe you overloaded that day or maybe something happened where there's an unequal stress to rest ratio. Mm -hmm. Our job is to help you mitigate that and help you get through that process and get back into it with some of the tools that we've learned to help you do that again. Mm -hmm. So will that take some time? Maybe you'll have to deconstruct the exercise and work your way back up. And I think you did that for a little while. Mm -hmm. Built yourself, you, you slowed down on certain things you know were aggravating, built yourself back up. Um, so yeah, but I, and I think that that's the thing. You see that many of these people um, who don't do that active exercise, because joint compression and joint motion helps stimulate uh, synovial fluid production. And they help, it's not just wear and tear on the cartilage, but it helps to promote better bone health. Mm -hmm. So movement, motion is lotion. That's a true thing. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to this 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 process that we do is a lifelong process. You got that? And so um, I don't ever tell someone they can't not do this anymore. I help them say, look, we want you to do that. Motion is lotion. Rest is rust. They say that in general. Um, we want to help promote synovial fluid. We want to help increase uh, joint motion. We want to help bone health. And so we want to get you moving. We're just going to teach you ways to find a, a slot back into the exercise where you can begin to build up. And I usually go stay within four week blocks. So, so to answer your question, finding someone who you want to work with you, because there are different th differences in therapists, their, their thought process. Finding someone you want to work with is just no more than I think a phone call away. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, listen, well, I think some of the things you say, this is who I am. Uh, 
I need some help with this particular thing. Can you help me with this? And this is my interest. Mm -hmm. And um, see what test the waters. And unfortunately, sometimes you may might you might not just have that good personal connection yeah. with your therapist. There's many of us out there, and they might send up some of those red flags. Like, yeah, yeah, you got to stop doing this for six months. Yeah. To me, if that's their answer, then yeah, they're they're too closed minded. Yeah. On, on the whole thing. Sure enough, and and you know, I think what it is is just more of a lack of education. We got a little bit of whispering right there. Yeah. We got a little bit of lack of education on on what happens and what it does and how important i mean this is an, this is an occupation this is a thing that you do that helps to um that helps you in many ways i mean one psychologically uh physically everything else and so it's the last thing i'm ever going to do is say listen uh, I, uh, I don't want you to do what you love to do because you're going to get arthritis we're all going to get arthritis at some point but uh, i found that those that engage in res regular physical activity and, and uh, a strength training have a much less incidence of, of uh, um, uh, developing or even maybe being symptomatic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I find that usually those that are unexercised that have this unequal wear and tear. Uh, and as, the, as we age, we get less mechanoreceptors, proprioceptors in the joint, which can cause a lack of control, which leads to muscle imbalances. However, though, in the exercise individual, that can be mitigated. So you get greater hypertrophy, better motor control, better strength, and then people do better overall in the exercise performance. I mean, there's some pretty cool stuff out there. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a great answer. Uh, I can't think of any other angles to come at it. What other, like, are there other related certifications? So your CHT, mm -hmm. is there something else to look for? Like, there, yeah, um, there can be, there, there's, it depends on what it is. There's, there's, um, there's many different credentialing out there, but just because you have a credential doesn't mean you're the smartest guy in the world. Um, I always educate myself on a position of weakness. So if I don't know something, I'm going to want to know more about it. So I've got several advanced credentials, but it doesn't mean I know everything about it. So I have a, there, you can look, there's a COMT, which is Certified Orthopedic Manual Therapist, um, which is a great credentialing to have. It's an advanced uh, credentialing certification through the International Academy of Orthopedic Medicine. Um, there's also things like you have, the Strength and Conditioning Specialist, CSCS, I have that as well. I think that's a great foundational thing. So if you see a clinician with that behind their name, that may be another good point right there that says, hey, this might be someone up my alley. Mm -hmm. um, so those things are things to look for. Most uh, CSCS have trained yes and they take it seriously and they know how important it is for someone to keep being be able to keep doing that right yeah so that's that is a good point yeah so if they and if they tell you like hey you got to stop this i'm going to say listen you you might have to if you have a, an acute injury i'd say you might have to decrease your intensity or slow down and something or even take a break for a little bit but i'm going to give you some other stuff to do yeah to help maintain that in a deloading of time or wherever you got to take some time so yeah. and then move back into that phase because the last thing you want to do is stop it all together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've broken a bone or something like that, yeah, sure. But then you can do some things, other things, like exercise on the opposite side of the body. Mm -hmm. You can do legs. You can do something else to kind of keep you mobile. I've got a couple of restrictions. Yeah, I've got a couple of kids right now. One kid is a 14-year-old kid. He's a big kid. He's got potential for D1 stuff already. He's 14 years old. He's just a big kid in football. He's going to D1 camps, and he's got a hand fracture. So mom and those guys are asking, what can he do? Well, lower body exercises, uh, um, you know, still doing some cardio stuff, uh, un stuff on the uninvolved side. And so they're happy with that answer. Right? So, oh, I so I didn't tell them, you want to sit around and do nothing for the next four or six I've weeks. Had, I've had a kid who broke his wrist or something, and I had him, we just we just hooked stuff up with, like, uh, straps. Like, I put a strap around his mm -hmm. his wrist. Yeah. And then he did his curls on the reverse hyper and it's stuff great. like that. Yeah. And he can still work the bicep. Sure. He can't clench anything with his hand. Yeah. You know? No, those but, are great. Yeah. If they're not going to disrupt you, if they're not going to disrupt the soft tissue healing or the or the bony healing or any cause any trauma, then it's great because it's going to increase blood flow. It's going to dampen the pain. And it's going to get them better faster. Mm -hmm. So maybe even a little bit of micro movement may stimulate bone form uh, bone formation. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I think that may be also that's great. Cool. So look for someone who will listen to you. Number one. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate sure. it. Yeah. Hope that helps you out, Josh. Thank you, and thanks to Jim for answering the question yeah. and coming down once again. Yeah, thanks, Billy. Thanks, man. Absolutely. All right. Three out of four blood today. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little sprinkles on.